Welcome everyone to Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming, and we are privileged and honored to once again have the CEO of DOF Reality, Igor Demunchuk. And uh, Igor, thank you again for taking time to join me on my channel and talk about all things motion platform and all the great things that's going on. Um, so welcome. Thank you, Mark. I'm really pleased to have it again and uh, opportunity and chance to talk to you and uh, to your viewers. Well, you know, you're my favorite CEO. I mean, of all the motion platforms and, you know. After Jeff Bezos, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. No, I'm more, I'm more an Elon Musk guy, I think. So anyways, but uh, anyhow, for those of you that may not have seen our first interview, we did six months ago. It was just about six months ago. Um, I'll post it up over Igor's head so you can take a look at it. We'll have it in the description below. But so, yes, right right there, right, that's it. So, um, so it's been about six months since we talked last. So what's new at DOF Reality? Give us an update and uh, let's talk a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot, you know. So uh, we, are, we are working on the, uh, all directions. So first we are working on our new website. I, uh, I guess we can, we, we can talk later in details, but it's a new website. Uh, a lot of improvements, a lot of um, customer experience improvements, especially to be more convenient, to be more uh, easy to f uh, navigate and easy to uh, understand what do you need, uh, how to choose the best product, platform, accessories, whatever. Second thing, we are working on uh, our improvements overall. Like it's it's a constant process, as you know. M many of you guys watch us. Uh, we do work constantly on improving the product. It's not like we just created the products yeah. like many vendors and um, keep it in the like super mass production and uh, don't like uh, don't change the scene. We improving the product and there are uh, there are things coming. Uh, there are like small and big ones. I hope I will announce something uh, something later in this interview. We will see oh. um, some of them. So, so one of my favorite things about DOF is that they're constantly improving the product. That's one of my favorite things. They like like Igor said, they don't just sit still. They're constantly doing innovation. So, um, are there any innovations coming for the platforms themselves? Um, the frame structure is pretty stable now, so we are happy with it. Everybody is happy with it. Uh, we are looking about more like um, flight accessories integration. So yeah. we are reviewing Puma integration because it's um, not perfect. Uh, okay. It's it's not that many customers I know, but uh, helicopters is also big big market. Yeah. yeah. And um, we do have uh, we partner with Puma. We work with them. They have our platform in uh, Switzerland. And uh, we try to find a compromise how to better better feed it. It fits now very well, but we want to expand it and also look in other like flight accessories, flight controls. Yeah. And um, yeah, so this uh, that's for the frame itself. So it might, might be end up with some options also. Uh, I don't know if you notice we partnered with um, U2, uh, Q4, um, are I think it's the it's a small company in UK, but they okay. do a lot of quick release. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking at some of those because I, I was thinking about putting one on my unit for the the to swap out the pedals, the rudder pedals to uh, racing. Yeah, I know exactly. So you guys have partnered with them. Nice. Yeah. So it's amazing, guys. Like uh, with the, they get the quite a while they have our platform, so they start releasing more and more like um, adapters, and they have like a special. A uh, special section on our web, their website about like the UF reality adapters. So basically, uh, as soon as uh, you have adapters from our platform to their system, and then you kind of use the standard uh, uh, mounts and everything. Okay. And it was amazing because uh, it's uh, it's really nice business and it's interesting. Like, and they put a lot of passion, they put a lot of efforts into R and D and into making it like so universal uh, compatible and uh, we just appreciate it we, we we want them to grow with us 
and we don't want to uh, kind of do the same uh, accessories on our side. Like besides the pedal mount, which is, you know, it's about a bit of metal consuming because they, they, most of the stuff they do plastic. Yeah. But for the pedal, uh, for pedal quick release, we still keep it on our side, but the rest to have it like uh, really uh, flexible, really, you know, like uh, agile and uh, adaptive, uh, that's, that's a place to go. And we direct like our customers there, amazing company, amazing service. Yeah, I looked at them because I think uh, Steve, the VR flight sim guy, uses a lot of their stuff uh, to swap out his jokes yep. and all that stuff. So, yeah, I have actually looked at that company. So that's awesome. Congratulations on the partnership. I hope it goes very well for you guys. So that's that's great news. Um, you know, we're talking about flight a little bit. Let's get into one of the topics that I still constantly hear from my viewers, and that's the cogging issue. And we talked about this on the last uh, interview that we did. And back then you were talking about, you guys have heavily been researching it and you basically thought it might be a software fix. Um, that was the path you guys were going down. Um, any updates on that? What, what have you guys found? Um, and then I'll share with you some of the stuff that I've learned too. But where are we on the cogging? Because that is always the number one topic that I hear, which I, I got to say something too. It's kind of cool because back in the early days, it was always quality concerns with DOF. Oh, customer service, you know, there were this myriad. This, we're talking years ago when I was looking into it. And so now everything's back. It's down to the cogging. So if that's the one last thing that we can fix, that's actually pretty cool that, that that's really the issue. Um, so, you know, kudos to fixing all the other things that people have been complaining about. And it's nice that we're we narrowed this down. So give us an update, if you will. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly as I told, uh, as you just mentioned, like, I like this angle because... Uh, honestly, it was way, way worse, like, when it started. And it, the, you know, be, nobody even, like, I, nobody even got that picky to the cogging before, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, first, like, I just, I just want to say, it, like, uh, it's not, it's not a new issue. Uh, it's, it's, it's the next step for improvement, definitely. It's the next uh, target for, like, uh, technical, technical perfection. But, it's not like that like our platforms two years ago, three years ago, they didn't have it. Right. Uh, you, I, I think, uh, um, I think Mark, you, you've seen like all old stuff, you know, it yeah. was, you know, it was, uh, you, you cannot even talk about cogging because, <laughs> because uh, it's, it's not, it was not that precise. It was not like, right. it, was, it was amazing platform for the, for the, for the years, yeah. but uh cogging was not there because uh because it's it was not that precise and now we get down to this one and it's it's the next uh it's the next uh, inch yeah. or whatever imperfection uh we're looking into it uh we have uh we did like numerous tests it's uh, i don't even want to mention how many research hours are there <laughs> it's not software it's definitely not software it's um it's a limitation of the motors to be able to rotate at certain speed with certain uh, torque. Mm. So it's pretty simple. You can like if the motor is made for like 1500 RPM yep. and you want it to rotate like 5 RPM, right. uh, it won't be able to provide enough torque. So uh, there is a threshold like at which RPMs the motor can get like enough torque to uh, to sustain your motion. But then, then you have, you have this um, kind of jitter because uh, because there are, uh, it's, it's a DC motor, there are two poles. So, um, we, we have an idea. We are testing it now, uh, with, uh, the pilot group. So there is, there is a pilot customers that are testing this, uh, this improve, like not improvement, like, um, uh, concept, uh, okay. of, uh, changing it. Okay. And, uh, I, I don't want to kind of say bold, like, hey, we, uh, we, we solved it or we do, haven't solved it because I don't want our audience to be misled right. because, until we get the final results. And right. that's what also we value in the company. We don't want to kind of uh, go mark, uh, <laughs> have marketing leading the products, you know? Yeah. So uh, we don't want to have like nice promises and not to deliver like for many years, like most of our competitors. <laughs> So we won't we, name we, we won't name those process. people. We'll just keep that on, on the down low. So, yeah, so, uh, so we want we want to be cautious, and sure. uh, we we're definitely working on it. 
So we checking this out. Uh, we we um, have another kind of uh, ways of uh, or solution in mind. If this one doesn't work, but as soon as we'll get get it in um, uh, con confirmed uh, production grade, then then we'll we'll make a move and uh, probably um, I will say I think honestly in like a month or two. Uh, we will have no like um, we have only SFUs, so probably right. we will get rid of uh, uh, traditional warm uh, warm beer boxes yep. in a few months uh, for many reasons. Uh, one for sure is improvement, and we don't want to have this like um, glasses or hey you have to uh, you have to get like H two, but right. then to get a good H two you have to upgrade it. And, right. You know, want to get it straight uh, without all this uh, multiple add-ons and options to drain your pockets, and <laughs> we want to make it simple as well. So um, uh, and also we will probably do this for seat mover because seat mover was always okay. a challenge, technical challenge for us, and that's a that's uh, that's the biggest achievement I would say for last month because I have already. A, a working prototype of seat mover based okay. on a few e brakes oh. is everything with all bells and whistles because um, uh, it was really challenging to fit it as uh, there in this in the tight scramped space of seat right. mover. So we have it have it there, but and, we, we need a bit of like uh, time to complete it. And uh, I think in uh, a month or two, we will, we will, everything will be a few basically. Awesome. It, it, now, is the seat mover still designed to be the affordable option? Is that, I mean, because that's always kind of been the seat mover um, theory, yeah, right? It's, it's, it's the it's the yeah, entry it level. Is, yeah, so it will be the same kind of, it will fill the same niche. For sure, okay. you know, as you is the, add some costs, you know, that's sure. it's obvious. Yeah. So, but but it will be it will be still there. It will keep keep this place in the niche. We'll have okay. it there. We'll have it in our portfolio because that, there was a discussion actually to cut it out. Uh, uh, as to our surprise, it was not the best seller. You know, like it looks like for thousand dollars you can get uh, motion and uh, everybody should jump on it. But um, like numbers wise, it's not. You know, like two three do. Blocks as sell uh, sold more by numbers uh, than uh, seat movers, but we, we we keep it there. We keep it in the portfolio still. Yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know you guys were on that. That's cool. Um, again, you know, you can see um, I've covered that on the channel about the difference in seat movers versus full uh, cockpit motion, all that. But seat movers are a good option if you just can't go with the full cockpit i mean that's uh it's great you guys are keeping that in there um so you were talking about your most popular your most popular units are still the h3 i assume or the h2 yeah, it's three. and you know for flight sims uh, most of the people go two yeah. because you is not that uh valuable for them and uh, some people are still cramped on space yep. so two and three but three is still leading uh two we, we, have, we start selling more two for flight sim guys and actually, I have a good news for also oh. flight sims. We T are planning to us. attend uh, flight sim expo in Las Vegas. In All Minnesota. right, excellent. It's booked, but but it's always but you know. Yeah. <laughs> get emails from the organizers. They get kicked out from their like book location. Sure. So now, like literally, like these days, they're scouting like other places in Las Vegas to have it in the same days, uh, but just different uh, different place. Wow. Okay, that's awesome. So anybody, yeah. and I'm assuming you have demo units, so people that have always wanted to try one of these can come and try them and all that stuff. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, uh, I think it's July. Uh, I think it's July flight sim expo. You can Google the dates. So okay. we will take three for sure. Uh, probably a P3. Um, I'm not sure about uh, we will be able to take two like platforms, but at least it will be three degrees. I don't think we will take six because it's right. It's a bit tricky uh, and it's a bit bulky, but uh, yeah. it should be good uh, just just to show people uh, the difference between no motion and no motion. Because yeah. to my surprise, like most of the flight sim guys still have this uh, paradigm that motion is probably good, but so damn expensive and not that much value. But uh, when <laughs> when you see them uh, uh, making first videos on the motion platforms, oh yeah, streaming, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, and if man, 
motion is such a huge deal. So for anybody that's that's got that opinion, um, as big a deal as VR was to just the world and simming and everything, motion is about at that level in my opinion. I mean, motion adds so much to it. So and for flight, it's it's amazing. Um, so yeah, if if you are in that camp, if you think, oh yeah, motion's kind of neat, but I don't know if I'd spend you know that much money on it. Yeah, <laughs> if you want immersion. Again, and again, the DLF reality units are the best value in my opinion, and I've done several videos on that. So that's awesome. And I, I want to get back to that cogging just a little bit um, just because um, we've been playing with the cogging on our unit. And so I'm sure you're familiar. And again, the, one of the things I will say, the cogging is mostly the fault of us flight simmers, since you're just talking about flight simmers, because the racers, you never noticed it. It was such uh, violent motions. It was never an issue when it was just a racing simulator. But when we started, the flight simmers started using it, that's when we noticed the cogging. So um, you can blame us. Um, so but so I'm, a, I'm assuming you're aware of Robert's mod. Um, have you heard of this? Uh, it's... Oh, uh to replace the motors with yes. the planetary yep. Yep. yep so so, so that's 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 the first we tried and we actually tried it before you know he published it because for us it was also interesting to have the solution uh we were looking into it even instead of sfu before sfu i would say oh. like when we choose okay which way we go so planetary gears was an option uh it's a, we did a lot of research the problem is um it's not reliable. Like I mentioned uh, in the post, uh, the ones that they use, um, it, you know, it's good for some hours, but we would fail after 500 hours or 700 okay. hours. That's what we cannot guarantee. And all the test units, even I had one here, like I didn't believe anybody. So honestly, like after all, you know, this like cogging discussion, yeah. I like, trust no one. I get... <laughs> at my place and I start playing with it. Like after about 50, 60 hours, I see the noise difference. Oh, yeah. It's not it's not that bad, but I see that it degrades. Interesting. Uh, most, yeah, I see the degree, like I see like increasing noise and I okay. see there's no way to solve it with some grease or whatever. So I experienced it myself. I okay. think it's, it's good and it might, help you if you fly not a lot you if you really do like a lot of slow flies you might be not using the resources of the motor that kind of okay. intensive as our test as our expectation as ever average of our average our average our average cast friends okay so um that's why it it is kind of good as a temporary i think soon we will see kind of um feedback from the guys who did it like yeah. the first place and i've seen already like uh that they yes yeah, they admit that the noise in increasing oh, they don't care so... but my problem is we saw we sell in thousands thousands units a month sure and we have a lot of people in europe and like in apartments and uh, yeah anywhere you know like in Asia, so they, we cannot allow it to be noisy. People have kids and everything, you know. Yeah, we have to we have to kind of to keep it to our standards, and it's it's definitely not for reliability for the noise. And it, you know, like it, you know, all the check check boxes are failed, you know, on this one. So that's why we, we looked another route, but to to kind of uh, to complement our community and. And their uh, kind of insistence on uh, reviewing it. We did this route again. Like I get myself a set of motors. Our guys in the factory get another generation of planetary gears. We get the best of the breed. We get like uh, average of the breed. We get uh, like super plastic gears. We get like um, alloys gears. And we did retest. It's not like you just get like old, uh, like three years old uh, research motors from the shops and redid it. We get a new set of the motors, and it's 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 not the solution. And it would okay. be a perfect solution for us, believe me. You know, for us it would be much cheaper. It's also the cost of these motors. You know, yeah. If it would be a solution, it you know we pay the same amount just for a few units. You know, just for this uh, for the shaft and the bearings, right. uh, Because they're so precise. So for us it would be a perfect solution, but uh, we, we we cannot let it go for production unfortunately but i, okay. I hope uh we'll get uh we'll get um final results of the testing soon and uh i hope we will get get this solved but again bear with us yeah treat it as not something 
something new that we kind of screwed up in our good design <laughs> from the years. You guys it's, suck. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not like we compromise something. Uh, we, it, it's a next it's next step for improvement. We do understand it. We work on it. Yeah. We have a prototype and um, just, yeah. again, you know, like just, just be patient and it, it, I know it's hard, you know, like everybody wants everything from uh, uh, like all, all the top specs from all the products. And uh, there is some reasonable stretch hold what to expect from the product like under $10,000 and what to expect for product like uh, uh, over $50,000. That's what like most of the professional flight sims that mm -hmm. they reference to are doing. So, yeah, there is like precision actuators, but you know, like you pay like $2,000 yeah. per year actuator and you get like a different platform, you get different budget. And for sure, like we are not competing, you know, and that, yeah. that's, I think, the beauty of this market is that overall, like I don't see like direct head to head competition on the, on the market because all, all the, all the vendors like having their niche, they doing different in terms of prices, in terms of um, market, in terms of um, even design, you know. So, so I think I I, I, I think everything I think everything is perfectly set up, and uh, we'll just keep improving on it. Yeah, and what I'll do. So what I did, I did do the Roberts mod, and um, just to let you know, I mean, and it, it definitely it definitely smooths everything, but it changes the motion. And I had to pop the KP. I had to get in there and, and adjust the firmware and get the KP value up. Um, I think it's stock one twenty. I had to bump it up to about three fifteen to get it similar, um, and then. The interesting thing is, once you do that, you start getting a little of the cogging back, which I think, in my case, is probably the sensors now. I think, because now we're moving the, the motor so fast, I think I'm feeling the slight cogging. It's nowhere near the other way. Um, but you're saying I need to keep an eye on the reliability, right? So um, so I, I'll watch that. We're going to test it. Yeah, you, you, you'll hear the noise for, for sure. And the problem is, you know, it becomes like slow motion platform overall. That's what I yeah. just want to add, add, add to it because it's perfect for flat guys, but uh, rally guys will, oh, will yeah. fail. No. And, that's, and, and, you know, and you cannot solve it with just cranking up KP. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and also, because even like for consoles, we have uh, we have this magic box. Yeah, oh, yeah. By the way, I have any good news on the magic box. So, okay, I was uh, going to ask you about that when we got yeah, to Yeah, so the magic box, yeah. We have some customers on the magic box that because they have to crank uh, KP, they have to change uh, KP and uh, guys in Sam Racing Studio, they did amazing job. So yeah. they kind of they change um, change the ver GUI version. So they have to put just because of all the stuff they have to put um, uh, a new a new value and new set of uh, settings in uh, Sam Racing Studio GUI to uh, to allow you know custom KP settings on the platform because before like Simulation Studio uh, controlling KP and KP for you guys it's uh, one of the settings like I would say low level factory settings that um, you can still change but we don't recommend it but uh, uh, the change as Mark was mentioned like when you go do it yourself route you have to kind of uh, learn and uh, uh, all this yeah. uh, low level stuff and you can change it low level stuff but the software like Simulation Studio have some, in some situation overwrite it, so we have to kind of roll yeah. it back and be able to not to do it. Yeah, yeah, I had to do all that stuff. So it's interesting, and, and like you said, the noise is because Robert did his. He had a H three, I think, so he only changed the two motors. When you do it on a six DOF with the six motors, I mean, I don't know if you ever had when you were young those little evil Knievel toys that you wind up and it's like. And you go shoot them up. Yeah, that's what you feel like you're in because every time this thing moves, it's just it's so loud. Now it's not a problem for me because I'm you know I've got my own room for it. But like you said, if you're in an apartment or something, it's gonna be loud. So um, and I do think that there's something to having that gearbox because I I, I kind of been looking into this and I'm probably gonna end up doing a video talking about just the the cogging from my understanding of it and um, you know and I definitely want to talk about all the things because I've seen. The causes of what are cogging, and I've seen you constantly reacting and trying to improve on it, and that's what I think people don't realize is that you guys have actively been trying to address this, and you've done it with SFUs and all that. So I'm I'm probably gonna do a video talking a little bit about that, and I'll be talking to you a little bit about that behind the scenes to get some information. But I I think the problem we're getting into is the torque ripple of the motors. I think the motors and the torque ripple is what's causing a lot of this cogging, from what I can tell. But I so you know I'm hoping you guys can find a solution. Um, and again, for racing, it's a non-issue because 
you you don't want it. And and I am noticing that the movement, especially it's weird the yaw on mine. Um, the yaw doesn't react as quick with KP up. It's just a different feel. You just lower ups and downs. So basically, yep. because uh, you 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 are exit exit access after the gearbox gets, I think, like three times, four times slower. Four, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, about four times slower, and that's that's it. And you ba you lose you you never, you, you know you, uh, you use your uniformity and you cannot use your platform for rally anymore and that's that's prob you know like if you 100 percent on flight maybe it will work for you and again like how many hours you have on your like uh, new motors oh Seriously. i probably have about i'm gonna guess 20 to 30. i've been trying to get oh, on it every so night for a few I, I saw like i saw like noise after like about 50 hours like okay the noise level goes up yeah Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've been kind of running it because we're testing Robert's flanges too, you know, because he, he 3D printed those. And, and so we want to see if those are durable because I'm, I'm always skeptical of 3D printing, but obviously Dave Daler's got his rig that's moving like a monster. It's all 3D printed. So I, I may be changing my opinion on that, but I, I do, I agree with you. I think if you're, if you're into general aviation flight and you want that smoothing, um, this is probably something to look at, at least if, if, if it bothers you that much. The cogging never bothered me that much. I put a transducer on mine and it masks it, but I've had so many people ask me about it. I'm like, okay, I got to do the swap to see. And so we're, we're going to continue to test it. But I think, I think some sort of gear reduction thing, because of the torque pull, I think that's the answer. Are you still looking into that at all? Or you guys have gotten away from changing the motors in the gearbox? Or are you just still looking for the right combination? Um, yeah, we, we try to change the combination because um, okay. if you introduce more gears, so you introduce more backlash. And, yep. you know, if you want to go to backlash story. Yeah, I know, I know. We're going to, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go there. No, that, so, and that's one of the things I want to talk about in that other video I do because that was a whole thing. For anybody that doesn't know, that whole backlash thing, yeah, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> we don't have the time to talk about that right now. But, yeah, uh, I'll talk about that when and we're not using your time, so... Um, yeah. so anyways, well, that's the, that's good news. And I'm glad you guys are aware of it. And I'm glad you guys are still trying to pursue it because obviously if you can make these motors smooth, then you've got the Holy grail of motion sims. You've got an affordable unit that's smooth and that's, you know, that's what every, now you got one that everybody will like. So I'm, I'm very, um, I I'm very positive in what you guys do and you guys always seem to overcome any issues. So I'm, I'm excited to see what you come up with. So we'll see. So, yeah. And um, just uh, when you ask me about, um, yeah, I just mentioned Magic Box. So, yes, we have a good news. We have uh, Magic Pedals and Magic Wheel ready. And for you guys, maybe you don't know what is Magic Box. So, Magic Box is our like um, invention in terms of connectivity to the consoles. Uh, it's unique product. Uh, nobody did it before, and I've seen nobody trying even to replicate it. Uh, basically, you are able to enjoy your racing games uh, on console as well with our motion platform, and it's um, it's a unique solution, proprietary solution. It, it was a huge, uh, huge kudos for cooperation with uh, Simerson Studio. Uh, amazing job with guys did there. Uh, and so Magic Box allow you to use the games on console. Uh, there is a limit uh, of uh, games on console because. Uh, only a few games, like a handful of games, Gran Turismo, Forza, Formula One, and maybe a couple other games, only a handful of games, they have motion telemetry. And the motion yeah. telemetry is stuff, uh, it's it's information that we should get from the game for, in order for us to be able to do any motion. And we were like stuck because uh, if, for example, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator on uh, consoles, it doesn't give motion data. <laughs> of so course not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing we can do about it, but uh, for like uh, other racing games and people like even try to uh, want to play like uh, other consoles, not just uh, Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, for us, it was critical to have like universal experience, and we we developed. It was originally planned with the Magic Box, but it was a bit delayed because it was like stage two of the Magic Box. We called Magic Wheel and Magic Pedals. So this is a st uh, this is add-ons. You can use for any wheel. Um, pedals are limited to Crossmaster, Fanatec, and um, Logitech because it's only three brands uh, kind of compatible officially with consoles. Okay. But the thing is, like, you can use and get motions uh, in any game. So you have a magic uh, magic wheel board that is attached to the wheel, and it sends uh, wheel motion. Uh, 
Uh, Magic mm -hmm. pedal is much smarter. It intercepts uh, pedal mo movements and okay. um, yeah, and gets uh, idea of your pitch and when you accelerate, when you brake. And this is the way to provide, uh, you know, like uh, provide motion in even for Mario Karts, you know. <laughs> I mean, I always laugh because we talked a little bit about this on the last one. I just laugh thinking about somebody in a in a rig playing Mario Kart, but I bet it's amazing. I mean, I bet that's just probably one of the coolest applications on a console. Yeah, and yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised, like, uh, because uh, we were skeptical. Everybody was skeptical about Magic Box, uh, and it it's it's you know selling like hot potato. And, yeah, nice. Uh, Magic we have a board ready. We just uh, we need uh, we have everything set ready for the shipping. We just got complete the software testing and complete some software updates, and I think we will be shipping it soon. So stay tuned. And uh, that's that's another unique technology, and that's another example of us like leading the industry because yep. uh, nobody nobody even have like something close to Magic Box, and uh, the Magic pedals and Magic wheels is even one step further. I, so I, are you going to do a bundle deal? I'm assuming you'll do a bundle with... I yeah. do either Magic Box only or Magic Box yep. with Magic Pedals and Wheels. And uh, we'll probably sell them separately for some customers that already sure. have Magic Boxes. But sure. it, it, we'll deal with it, yes. Excellent, excellent. Um, all right. And I know you've got to run. I appreciate the time you have. Um, a few more minutes if you if you got them. i sure. um, like to ask a few more things. So um, we, we talked about um, kind of the affordability of the DOF units. And one of the things I wanted to top, uh, talk about right here <clears throat> was that uh, DOF has been kind enough that they actually gave us a discount code. And we actually started this at the end of last year. And um, I just want to say thank you for that. Now, there's a change I have to announce here. So we had to pull the code off of the description in the website because the code was always intended to be a code for my viewers and as a as a courtesy to my viewers and what happened was because I had the code in the descriptions uh, Google was doing the search and, and it was becoming a thing where people would just do a search for the code and they'd use it without watching the videos so uh, moving forward we're gonna put the code in all of the videos and um, it's currently Geigo 5 and so if you put that in at checkout you will get a 5% discount and then it also helps the channel out as well. So if you're still looking for a discount, they won't be in the descriptions anymore. They will only be in our videos. And we may have to change them from time to time. So if you're looking for a discount code, if you're watching this a year from now, and you're like, hey, that code doesn't work, look at our latest DOF Reality videos, and that will be where the latest code is. Because we, I don't want this being abused. That's not the point of it. And uh, I, I'm very thankful to you, Igor, just for even offering that to my viewers. So we definitely want to not abuse that. Um, and then I've also had people, just so you guys know, I've had people say, hey, your code's not working. Anytime the DOF's running a special, they deactivate our code because usually their special's better than what you'd get with mine and they want to get you to get the best deal. And that's totally fine with me because at the end of the day, I want you guys to have a discount on motion platforms. I want you guys in this uh, environment. I, guys, I want you guys to experience this. So um, if my code's not working, that's likely because DOF's already doing a better deal and they want to give you the best code. So that's what's going on with the code. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to manage that and hopefully the codes won't start to show up on Google searches because that's never been the intention. And uh, again, Igor, I'm thankful to you for for making me aware of that situation. So we pulled them out of the descriptions and we'll see if this handles it. But the code is, the idea on the code is for my viewers to get a discount. And so that's that's yeah. that covers that. So um, is there anything you want to talk about on that as well or? Um, uh, yeah, like I really thank, uh, thank Thank you for you, Mark, you know, for your efforts, for helping uh, with these videos and product development. We have a lot of, you know, like peer-to-peer uh, -peer chats and um, yeah. we change a lot of information. I, I really appreciate your efforts and playing the active part in the community because uh, at the end, like community matters. And it's not just uh, people making money out of my platforms. I want to have uh, people that enjoy my platforms yeah. at the comfort of their home. And I want to, you know, feel, feel their like uh, enjoyment and pains as well. And uh, it, that's, that's help, helped us to evolve the product. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We're all enthusiasts. I mean, Igor started as an enthusiast. So this is a 
thing we're passionate about. It's not, he's not a CEO that's just going, okay, I can make more money if I do this. We're passionate about this. And, you know, and, and we had talked about, and I, I want to ask you about this. Last time we did this six months ago, we had talked about potentially doing this on a regular basis um, and not even necessarily just for DOF reality and, and brand specific, but just as a general forum. Um, so are, are you still interested in that? Cause I'd love to do stuff like this, you know, uh, you know, maybe once a month or something. I, I, does that sound yeah, good? Yeah, so uh, once a month, definitely. Uh, also, uh, I have a few ideas, like um, I, uh, our marketing manager will probably send you some ideas because okay. I think there's few few videos you can do, you know, uh, on your own that uh -huh. uh, kind of um, will help us, help you to... Um, we can do assembly videos, but it's not about like assembly videos or assembly instructions, but uh, about some experience from you, from like a real customer, not not our guys in the right. factory that uh, assembles them every day. Sure. So uh, we'll probably like uh, we'll probably be, be interested for about like uh, more hands-on videos, and on top of the interviews, that's that's you know yeah. I, I I like I like to hear feedback, I like to hear you know like questions. And uh, guys, I also encourage you to send send them to Mark. He'll collect it. We'll do an interview. Yeah. Uh, you can like you can send it to our support guys. You know, if you want like kind of uh, to uh, get get it to my attention, you can always ask it. But uh, if you want like a detailed um, uh, and uh, good explanation, also uh, don't be shy. Send it to Mark. Send it to us. We'll include it in the next video because yeah. we want to uh, not just answer it one on one and just copy paste and repeat it to anybody else answering. So we want to have it uh, available for everybody to see where we're going, where you know wh what our strategy, and uh, to address um, common common questions, common concerns, or interest uh, in one stop shop. And, I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention also, if you guys are DOF Reality owners or anything, make sure you sign up for the DOF Reality Builders Facebook group. Um, it's it's an invite only, but they're very, as long as you're um, not toxic, you know, it'll be fine. But I highly yeah. recommend, <clears throat> that is a place that there is such a wealth of information if you have questions. So DOF Reality Bu uh, Facebook group, um, and I'll, I'll throw the link down, down in the yeah, description. Yeah, today because yes. it's over 12,000 I know <laughs> members and on, look I, I I look on our competitors I don't want to name names but nobody have even said in like not non motion platforms they have the same numbers and can you yeah. imagine like 12 12k members for the motion platform for like it's it's unique and uh, it's so friendly and it's so you know welcome so and, uh, many smart guys on there i mean i and gals i mean there are I, I go on there when i get stumped and uh you know there's always somebody there's so many like engineers types and stuff on that just they go way deeper than anything i even want to get into but uh there's a wealth of knowledge uh, as a resource. So not only do you have the DOF Reality official, you have me, you also have this great resource in the DOF Reality Builders and I uh, highly recommend that. So so yeah, what we'll do, and you know what I'm going to do? Um, I mean, because this could be fun live stream too. Um, we're obviously recording this one, but, but I'm going to throw a poll. I'm going to put a poll down there. I want to find out if you guys like it recorded and, and produced, or if you'd rather us try a live stream. So I'm going to throw a yep. poll down below. You guys sound off on which format you like. And if, if we get enough response, positive response, that you guys are into the live stream stuff or would like to try it, I think I can set that up. And what we do, and we definitely try to get Jeff there. I've still been in contact with Jeff. He's just been busy. But I think a live stream, Jeff would be fantastic on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can do with Jeff. We can also involve uh, Dave and... Uh... Uh, we can, you know, we can do, we can do many, many ways, and uh, life is always good for for pe people feeling that their questions are like addressed and answered right away. So let, let's get some traction. I think uh, we can start like monthly at least. Maybe yes. we can get biweekly. Uh, and at, and again, you know, like it, it all up to you, and it's all for you guys. Um, yeah. we, we're working for you. We we will always working for the community. And uh, product is the second, but uh, community and appreciation and excitement of you guys say, saying like warm words and sending some cool pictures. That's yeah. That's oh, and, and I constantly am hearing from people that are they're so curious about the product. I mean, I don't know how many people you know, are constantly hitting me going, hey, well, does it do this? And what about this? And they just are constantly amazed when they get it at, at the experience yeah. it adds. So, again. 
plenty of videos on the channel if you want to know why I'm a DOF Reality fan. Again, Igor does not pay me to say this stuff. Um, I just love this product. I love this product, and I'm so thankful that this product is out there and it was available. And um, again, thank you for giving me an experience that I don't know that I ever could have afforded any other way. So thank you. Again, I, I always tell you that, but I just want you to know that's how much I appreciate you and, and your company and what you guys have done. So yeah, we'll look at doing this um, at least once a month. I don't want to drop the ball or I don't want this to, because we've talked about it a few times and it kind of goes sideways. I think let's just do this I'll uh, plan on doing at least an interview once a month, and we'll, that way we'll keep you guys up to date. Uh, I am going to do a lot of videos on DOF. I have that planned. Uh, I'll look at uh, what you guys sent as well, but I already have about four or five that I have in mind already that I want to do. So it's going to be a big year on the channel for the DOF reality stuff. Um, one last question I've got to ask, and this is something that um, I've been curious about, so hopefully we'll get a definitive answer here. So I always call it DOF reality. But then I listen to Steve, the uh, Flight Some Guy, and some of those guys, and they call it DOF Reality. What is the right name of the company? Uh, it's DOF. But look, it's abbreviation. So it's degrees of freedom abbreviation. Yeah. I'm, yeah, like you hear from my, my accent. So I'm not the, not, not the native speaker, you know. And uh, Steve is British. You yes. are being American. So I guess that's the difference between British English and American English. Yeah. I the mean, ways of pronouncing abbreviations. Yeah, I, I would say there's no right or wrong answer, but let's just say I'm right and Steve's wrong. Let's just let's just leave it at that. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So thank you for that. Is that has been a pressing issue? I think in the community, far beyond cogging, far beyond any of the lash. I think it's the proper uh, name of the company. So I'm glad we we cleared that up on this on this uh, on this little interview here. So um, is there anything else you want to talk? I know you got to go. And again, I appreciate the time. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about that we didn't get a chance to talk about? No, I think we are good. Uh, I think we addressed all nice and uh, tricky questions as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark, a lot. I appreciate your efforts. Well, again, thank you for everything you've done for us. And uh, I will definitely keep an eye on the durability of these new motors and all that. And, and we'll talk about it. I mean, if we're going to do this once a month, I can give you an update. Um, I'm obviously going to do some videos on the upgrade and what we've done. And, uh, yeah, I just... Really excited to see what you guys come up with because, again, if we get that smoothing out, man, we've got the perfect motion sim. So that's what we're shooting for. So There will be another, uh, there'll be another thing to work on. Uh, don't, uh, don't, don't, They'll don't, find don't, something. Uh, get, uh, like, there will be another thing, but that's, that's <laughs> what makes life exciting, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed the interview. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. And, again, we will uh, keep you posted. Make sure you hit that poll. Let us know if you'd rather see this in a live stream format or if you'd like the produced version. And I guess on that note, until next time, you guys all remember to get your game on. Thanks. Thank you, guys.